Canyon Run. This is the summer round robin, and we're at round six. Uh, we're into the second third of the tournament now. Uh, this is a round robin tournament. We got 16 cars here. They go head to head each round. Um, so every car gets to race every other car at least one time. I'm Brock Wheeler. I'm going to be bringing LB action um, today and for the rest of the summer. This is the current standings here. You can see there's a two-way uh, uh, head-to-head battle at the top of the leader's board there, um, followed by three uh, close on their heels. Um, on this track, there's eight checkpoints. Um, first car in each heat, uh, first car across the checkpoint wins the point. And then at the end of the heat, the winner of that heat wins an extra point. All right, here we go. We're going to start with Colin from Cup Bates Racing. He's riding the, the, driving the lightest car in the, in the race here, up against Ricky Rude from Galvis Racing. He's going to be taken over um, for Wild Will, Wildcat Willie's Jaguar, whose axle came loose and isn't able to run anymore. And Colin, man, getting tossed out of the interstate gully. Yeah, as you can see, Ricky Rude, so he's pretty fast. Didn't quite, it was one of those NASCARs that did not qualify uh, for the tournament proper, but he's being pulled in here as a substitute of Uncle Elvis's team. And you can see there that Colin did a nice job of uh, winning the battle against that much heavier car. Uh, that is, in fact, the lightest car in the race against the heaviest car in the race. Your number 15 car with Colin against your number 8 car with Ricky Root. And there's Amanda, uh, Colin's girlfriend, uh, chastising him for going so fast in the painter's tape gully where you know a car that late shouldn't go. Better job this time, Colin, but uh, what's up there? Just pulling right over. <clears throat> All right, but it looks like Colin's going to win that battle. He's going to get the point. I think Ricky Rude just needs to get uh, get his wheels underneath him, so to speak, and get, uh, get used to driving this car again. He hasn't, he hasn't raced, of course, since qualification. There, yeah, that's not the way to do it, Ricky Reed. See Colin uh, scrubbed a lot, a lot more speed this time, so he's able to make it through Painter's Tape Gully, no problem. But yeah, he just pulled right over there for some reason. All right, that's going to bring us up to Kid Kham for Gen X Vintage Racing, driving Roll Machine. He's going up against the current leader, Maxine Uncle, driving for 503 Racing in that Cyclone. That's your current leader against your number 12 car in the uh, KM's World Machine. And Maxine looking pretty good. Just keeping it loose and sliding a little out of control over into Sports Car Corner. Gets left uh, up in the second straightaway. Let's take another look here. That's how Maxine's done it all along. Aggressive drive, and she just sent Kit into the curb there, heading into turn one. She never looked back. Of course, she got into a drift there coming out of Painter's Tape Gull that she couldn't recover from is what it looked like. All right. Now we've got Maxine on the inside. We've got Kit on the outside. Once again, Maxine taking the whole shot. Kit's trying to come back in the second straightaway. Unable to do so. Oh, Maxine gets it all wrong. Coming out of Painter's Tape Gully. And uh, there you go. Looks like Maxine's going to win this battle. Maxine wins it in the turn one, sends Kit up into the curb, but he does a pretty good job of recovering, and he tries to get back on turns on the second straightaway, but once Maxine hits that downhill, it's all over, and she puts the hammer down. Unfortunately, just couldn't keep it under control. All right. Next up, we've got uh, Gretchen driving for Alley Cat Race Club with that pink number 29 fair lady. She's at the bottom of the standings. We've got Scooter Roundwell driving for Spirit of 64 and that yellow Buick Stalker. He's your current uh, number two car. And look at this, Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen winning, uh, winning a point. Take another look at this. Gretchen's on the outside there. And uh, winning, winning the battle out of turn one. It's not the mess, not the nicest looking run in the world, but she does get her nose out there. She gets across the line with a little help from Scooter, as it were. And here we go. Now she's on the inside. Scooter's on the outside. And 
she takes it to him and wins the battle again. Looking good on the descent. And she makes it all the way around turn four. Oh, and then with a little help from Scooter, she makes it down to the finish straight. That's a seven point run. Oh my God, that's fantastic. There she is down on the finish straight. There's Scooter wondering what the hell happened. And here we go now. We got Gretchen on the inside. We got Scooter on the outside. Gretchen just takes it to him. With just some nice aggressive drive and then sets herself up real well for a beautiful rundown out of turn two into Painter's Tape Gully. Which she handles superbly. And then a stylish drift around turn four. But she loses her momentum right there. And we think it's all over, but there comes Scooter. He doesn't make it around. Maybe he doesn't even see her. And sends her the rest of the way down across checkpoint five, six, and seven. Fantastic. All right, Gretchen. Uh, moving on up, earning some points down there that uh, she really needed down the bottom of the bottom of the standings board. All right, moving right along, we got her teammate. This is Polaris for Alley Cat Race Club in the green safety third up against Snakes. Drive for Rust Bowl Diecast Racing and Filthy Animal. We got the number 13 against the number four. We got Polaris on the inside, Snakes on the outside. And Polaris with a nice bit of drive at night. Stalls out the bottom of the descent there, so only two points, but with uh, darn near 30 points, or 30 grams between these two cars, Polaris in a much later car just sends Snakes way up high to where he can't recover, and then just takes the rest of those points. Nice job, Polaris, but can he keep it up and run two? That's the question. We're going to see Snakes on the inside now. Well, after we get him... Uh, there's Tom, Dick, and Harry, and the Daily Dollar Short crew getting them set back up at the start gate. Snakes on the inside, players on the outside. Snake wins the battle this time into and out of turn one. And looks pretty good. Nice clean run across checkpoint four. Does he have enough momentum to make it down out of the finish straight? No, it doesn't look like he does. And there's Polaris back down there, stalled out at the bottom of the center one more time. Snakes is going to win that battle, all right. Now we got Matthew driving Superman for ND Racing up against Dirtus for Team Ragtag in the old in old style. Matthew's coming off of two poor poor weeks for him. He's looking to get back up get back up to the top again. And here's how he does it. Look at the speed! Holy cow! Whoa! Eight point run, a perfect run, taking out the photographer and some bear and. I don't know what's going on there, holy cow. But man, spectacular. Dirtus is left up on top. So here we go. Matthew getting spun around. Looks like he leaves the door open for Dirtus, but Dirtus just stalls out. And Matthew picks it back up in reverse and never looks back. Well, I mean, he's looking back the entire time, actually. But the, the speed he picked up at the bottom of the descent and carried through. The rest of the track is unbelievable, and then using those barrels to keep on the track to get that extra point, just expertly done, Matthew. Fantastic. All right, run number two, Math is on the outside, Dirt is on the inside. Super aggressive move, taking Dirt is right into the wall. Once again, in reverse. Yeah, Matthew's going to... Oh, man, he's going to show you how it's done, right down the middle. Now I'm going to have to go back and check our records, but I'm pretty sure that that's the first double perfect run. The first 16-point run we've had at Garden Canyon Run. So, man, after two, uh, two poor performing weeks, Matthew uh, really does a turnaround here. And he's going to not only get 16 points, but they get a bonus point for winning the battle and get 17 points on the day. I mean, what can you say about that? Nicely done, Matthew. One more look at how he took it right down the middle there. Beautiful run. All right, we're going to get back up into the start gate here with the other ND Racing uh, driver, Nick Devers. He's in the, uh, the number three NASCAR. The only uh, Hasbro in the tournament. We're going to see uh, him up against Leonardo in the number 14 Porsche. That blue Porsche there has been uh, looking pretty good and consistent all along. He's driving for Diego's diecast. Oof, man, Nick getting quite the whole shot there. Leaving Leonardo in his dust. Whoa! 
flying out of control and then skid to a stop himself as Leonardo, the two of them keeping it super loose. You can see Nick just easily took that whole shot. And then has a little bit of trouble hitting the wall, hit the wall again. Loses it coming down to the scent. Oof. Keeps the wheels down. And there comes Leonardo. Maybe he's checking to see if he's okay. I don't know what's going on. But they both get to do a stop right there uh, before Painter's Tape Gully. Alright, so back up in the Stargate. Leonardo's on the outside. Nick in the orange car on the inside. And the two of them again keeping it loose. Nick getting four points. Oh man, Leonardo on his roof. the whole shot. It's looking pretty good on the second straightaway. Nice down on the descent there. Keeps it. Oh, and that's where it goes all around. He just slams himself into Painter's Tape Gully, but look at him back right up onto the track to get that fourth point, though. That's an expert driver right there. Leonardo, of course, somehow, got, somehow ended up on his roof. We're going to have to get him turned over. Just another look at Nick just throwing himself into Painter's Tape Gully get back on his wheels and then expertly backing it right across checkpoint four to get that last point. Nicely done. And then we get uh, Diego's diecast uh, team back on their arc. That brings us to the next uh, next set of cars here. We've got Xanthopy driving Rainbow Bright for just another pop culture reference up against Daddy G driving Smiley 1 for G4 diecast racing. Daddy G's on the outside, Xanthopy's on the inside. Fancy 360 by Daddy G. Whoa, a lot of speed, but not as well. Oh, man, a whole bunch of mayhem happening down the Painter's Tape Gully today. So we got a nice little battle there in turn one. Daddy G gives, gives Xanthopy a little bit of a bump. Does a 360, and then down into Painter's Tape Gully where he gets flipped onto his roof and carries a ton of speed. He goes about an eighth of a mile on his roof. Here comes Xanthopy, using Painter's Tape Gully like a quarter pipe. Whoa! But she gets back on her wheels, but she's not able to get around him. She does come right up uh, right up to Daddy G there in turn four. All right, here we go for run number two. Daddy G's on the inside, Xanthopy on the outside. It's a tight battle. As we head to turn, turn two, Xanthopy makes her move. Oh, and a beautiful run on a Painter's Tape Gully, but she can't keep it on the track. And you can really see her fighting that, fighting that rainbow bright out of, out of Painter's Tape Gully too. When we get another look at this here, so Daddy G wins the wins the whole shot, and Rainbow Bright just never leaves him alone. Tries to go up the outside, goes back to the inside, and it's right here where Daddy G tries to turn around for some reason. He should have just kept it in reverse. So that's where Xanthopy makes her move. Look at her fight that big car. Taking it right off the track, over to the sports car corner where there are no sports cars, it seems. Drifting the whole time, fighting that, fighting that big thing. Beautiful. Beautiful job, Xanthopy. All right, next up. All right, so last up here, we've got Dusty Oldford and the Yellow Scream and Hauler for Spirit of 64 up against Speedy G for G4 Diecast Racing and Rodney uh, Drive to Smiley 2. Speedy G's on the inside, Dusty's on the outside. Speedy G gets a whole shot. Oh, leaving the door open for Dusty. What's he gonna make of it? Oh, and he loses it in turn four. Carried a lot of speed into turn four. It took a bad line, is what it looked like. Speedy G easily getting the whole shot here. But just kind of losing control coming out of coming out of there. He gets that one point though. But that's where Dusty makes a nice pass. He handles Painter's Cape Gully with a lot of speed real well. But it's once he gets to turn four, yeah, he's up on the inside rail there and it just sends him up on his roof. So we're gonna have to get him taken care of and get back up to the start gate so we can do the last one of the day here. We've got Speedy G on the outside. We've got a little trouble with the start gate, it looks like. But here we go, Speedy G getting the whole shot. A little 360 action before he hits the downhill. 
loses it on the downhill. Not so for Dusty, but he does another time and loses it, uh, loses control coming out of Painter's Tape Gully, so that's unfortunate. Speedy G down in the garden bed. Yeah, you can see that the Speedy G, even from the, what appears to be for most cars, the slower lane, just easily gets that whole shot. And there's where he gets out of control coming down the descent. Oof. Dusty carries a ton of speed and then loses it, coming out of Painter's Tape Gully right there. Sliding to a stop. Bringing to an end, round six. Dusty's gonna get that battle and that extra point. And that closes us out here. Uh, we're gonna tally it up and take a look at the standings after round six. And we're gonna see that uh, Maxine is still up in the lead, but with Matthews. Um, with that huge run today, 17 points, getting back up into second spot. So we've got a, another uh, a nice tight battle up at the lead, followed by a three-way battle for third. It's, it's uh, pretty exciting down here, folks. All right, thanks to all our sponsors. Thanks a lot. Uh, we couldn't do this without you guys. Thanks for coming along and watching. And uh, for all of you that are watching and haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing so you can follow all the action um, every week. And you can go back uh, to the channel and check out our playlist and, and follow the tournament from the beginning or any of our other tournaments for that matter. Um, but anyway, this is Brock Wheeler. It's been my pleasure bringing you uh, Summer Round Robin. Stick around. We'll be back again in about a week for more. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.